Salutations, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we're playing as the Empire of Japan last time. We had a little bit of a falling out with our GDP. Our national debt exploded, but hey, we could be doing a lot worse. And we're trying to uproot and get rid of all sorts of corruption within our government, which is taking its toll on us, but sometimes, as some people said in the last uh, video, sometimes it's gotta happen, sometimes it's painful, but we've just got to do it. So anyways, we've got to protect our democracy. We've made great strides to strengthen the Japanese democratic process. The rights of both the public and the opposition have been clarified and improved. While none can dispute our status as defenders of democracy, there's so much to be done. Polling stations run using ineffective and corrupt practices were ignored by previous administrations. The Prime Minister intends to remedy this error through simple yet significant reform. Firstly, more training will be given to poor or poll organizers to assist them in dealing with long queues and confused citizens. Secondly, the voting slips will be separated into stackings or stacks based on party, with all candidates for the party displayed on each slip. Finally, the vote shall be made behind an obscuring screen to ensure prying eyes cannot enter fear in our elections, which will be a very, very good thing. We have a little bit of progress going ahead with that, about 10 days, which is not bad. we got some uh, stuff, some stuff going over there, and Russia is still falling apart. They're actually coming together by killing each other off. Uh, don't you ever change, Russia. Don't you ever change. Oh, and Austin's not doing well either. Ooh. SS Oba Ashnit Oslan. Very cool, very cool. Let's see. I asked you guys yesterday how, we should, how I should play. Brittany, apparently you can go the Democratic route. You can actually go, like, the Burgundian system route as well, but I think I would have heard that you get conquered if you do that, so... We'll probably don't do that. Protecting our democracy. Takagi sat alone in his office, all but the essential staff at the Imperial Diet had gone home for the day, which had turned the usually bustling and noisy halls rather more quiet. It was this time of day that the, that the Prime Minister used to reflect upon current events as well as his own recent actions and decisions. He could not deny that he had made good progress in terms of implementing democratic pro reforms. The school tours of the Imperial Diet had proved successful. More young people than ever had expressed interest in joining the YSK, and many more were eager to vote in the next election. The best result had sometimes been the increased support for the government among the youth. There have been successes in other areas too. The independents had recently proven more agreeable in the Diet ever since their numbers were slightly thinned through the auditing process. Even more corruption, Takagi's ever-present enemy, had been purged through a recent examination of the think tanks. Not only had this yet again weakened bribery and subversion, but it markedly improved the effectiveness of the think tanks themselves. For the first time in a while, they were actually doing their jobs. Progress has been swift, and certainly quite efficient. Still, this left the Prime Minister with a single lingering question. Has too much been done in too little time? This is not the first time Takagi had feared that his reforms had been rushed through without enough thought given to his long-term consequences. He reminded himself that this was inevitable of hindsight. The dice had been cast in his favor. Now all Takagi could do was plan his next turns carefully. Precise and steady reform was necessary, but nothing would truly get his enemies off his back. The ship had been set, along, set sail long ago, and the captain was now bound to sail back safely into port. No turning back, and got more stability. Great. Uh, resistance, not bad. Really not that bad, actually. Especially from the U.S. Like, the U.S. does not like to resist, because they probably think we'll probably blow them up, which we which we probably will. Ending emergency measures. We get more political power. Ooh, better consumer goods. Well, let's go with that one, and then we're going to go down this path here. Ending emergency measures. The effects of wartime policy do not only hurt our economy. Socially, Japan has been stagnating due to the effects of the wartime laws. A siege mentality permeating Japanese society, which has prevented its best and brightest from shining, trapped in a vicious cycle of insurgencies and conscription. In addition, while we have won the war and claimed our mantle as the liberator of East Asia, the Japanese people have not benefited from fruits of the sphere. Hence, with the majority in the diet secured and with sufficient backing from the House of Peers, the Admiral will make moves to restore normalcy in the home isles, starting with mobilization laws and then moving on to further economic and social deregulation. A bold step forward, this would definitely make ways among our popular support base. We also definitely earn the ire of the militarists and the bureaucrats. Absolutely. Hey, minus 21 billion. That is not bad. Right now, we're building some air bases, it looks like. Is that an air base? Yeah, it's an air base. We're building some more civilian factories. We're building quite a few radar stations, which actually be pretty darn useful eventually. So, and We could cut spending, but we'll get there eventually. Oh, that GDP. That hurts. That hurts quite a bit. But you know what? It's not too bad. We have 111, 311 divisions. That's not too bad, I would say. <clears throat> nice. Field hospitals. It is 65. Happy 65, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. We're just going to get through as much research as we possibly can. It doesn't really matter too much. Obviously, there's things we should be doing instead of other stuff, but if we end up in a thermonuclear war, the, the campaign will end pretty quickly. <laughs> cool. Cool. Global forces. Yes, yes, please. More ground attack, that'd be awesome. And then, let's go ahead and do continuing the legacy. 
The Admiral's grand scheme of reform and liberalization is not a new one. In fact, one could argue that it is a return to the status quo of Emperor Meiji's and Taisho, a careful balance between freedom and restraint, between traditional values and foreign ones. We can therefore leverage the positive aspects of the Meiji and Taisho eras and project the Admiral's administration as a continuation of those eras. No doubt promoting reforms as such would appeal to the more cautious and hardline members of the Diet as well as the nobility within the House of Peers. But most importantly, we keep us safe in the zone with the public by appealing to a time and ethos, lost to the excesses of militarism. Even more stability? Don't mind if we do. Love, 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 more stability. We only have minus 45%, so that's not too bad, right? Hey, weekly change is going up by 3.2%. 3 we have weak support in the House of Peers, but our approval is not bad. Not bad at all. Hey, minus 42%. This is, like I said, getting much better. We have medium taxation, which hurts us. Finishing sweeping anti-corruption measures, low income weighted, trinket minimum wage, no unemployment subsidies, two year draft, registered voting. If we have registered voting hurts our stability, huh? And ten to fifteen percent poverty rate. Okay, cool. Skilled refugees. Okay, okay, okay. More daily political poverty. How much do we get now? 0.77. Not bad. Alright, continues legacy. Appealing to the Kokukutai. Let's do that. In addition to appealing to the legacy of the glorious times of Emperors Meiji and Taisho, we can present our administration as a means to strengthen the Kokukutai, the national po polity, and the essence of Japanese sovereignty, as well as the rightful means through our which our society should be governed. This can be achieved by presenting our performance efforts as a return to older times, strengthening our purity, overcoming social unrest, bringing forth a new golden era for Japan as per the Kokutai no Hongai, while at the same time discrediting the excesses of the militarists and the conservatives. We lose political power, but appro public approval goes up. Oh, what is this? Military coup in the Kingdom of England? England's flame grows dimmer. What? I, I've never seen that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have never seen this happen before. Montgomery? Wait, so I think the... Himmler lost, right? In this campaign, Himmler lost. We have a high liberal bias. Probably for the media or whatever. But, uh... Oh, they have no content. Oh, that's so sad. No, 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 no. That's so not good. Wow, 3.4 billion? Oh, yes, please. I will start raising up the GDP a little bit more, though. Maybe the next time. Yeah, maybe next time we'll do that. That might be good to do. Get integration. We do have some tanks, I think so. We'll just research whatever we can, right? And then we shall do reconciling, reconciling reformism. The Battle of Barcelona. Ah, oh, there you go. <clears throat> Our faction and elements of the reformed bureaucrats share the same perspective. Japan needs reform and restructuring, or it will perish. However, we will greatly differ from the reformed bureaucrats in the methods by which we wish to act in the ends we act to towards. Ooh, military austerity. By compromising on certain issues with the reform bureaucrats, such as streamlining the state apparatus, we are able to draw support from most moderate reform bureaucrats and maybe even some Kishi's lackeys. This will come at a cost, namely the support of the House of Peers and the ire of the military, as such a radical restructuring is risky. Ooh, oh, the, the support actually goes down. That is not ideal. That is really, really not ideal. But we already have 1.3% low support, so... Whatever. Actually, what we could do, we could try Kaya here. We have plenty enough support here. We could probably attack publicly. That's going to cost some support. But if we have 53 guys, if we do this, we have 56. We got three more guys. Not bad. A coup in Scotland. And our support went down a little bit, but you know what? I think that's okay. Get a little more support for us. Hey, 5% more stability from that. I wish we kind of saw what the effects were. I forgot what they were at this point. <laughs> hey, but not bad. Not bad at all. And you have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Alright, Unified Resistance. We can play to some of the more independent-minded reform bureaucrats' opposition to Eno and Ikeda's conservatives and the military. No matter how disparate our means and ends, we can both benefit by promoting a united front within the Diet. This would, of course, shake up the political scene with the Diet massively. Such a large, tenuous front would definitely result in disagreement and clashes over policy. But right now, it would be better to drive the conservatives out than sort our differences later. The conservative faction increases moderately, and the IJA, as well as the IJN support, increases moderately as well, which is... Okay, I guess. Not great, but it's okay. Nothing really ideal in our situation. But look at that stability. Minus 13%. Going up by 3% every week. Actually, that is directly affected by our... Oh, okay. So that's directly affected by our public approval. Lowering this is not good. Non-existent support in the house. Whatever. So, we're considering reformism. The warm day that made it an excitement time, or exciting, or excellent time for Prime Minister Takagi to speak with his esteemed guests in the small cottage outside of Tokyo. As days away from the endless tumult of the government, gave in Tokyo... Uh, or the tumult the government gave in Tokyo were rare, and even rare did work follow him outside the city. But met with men like Nakasone and Kido, a few hours would not hurt. 
Both men had been audacious in their insistence to see him after Takagi let his feelers out for new allies and the lower house. While the former was certainly well liked, his proposals for merging Kido's reformers to the reformed bureaucrats had irritated the admiral, who curtly dismissed his appeals before, before another call from Koichi Kido, a man whose political maneuvering could never be kept in check. In the number of short talks outside the government complexes of T Tokyo, Kido had made an excellent case for unifying the more liberal factions in the YSK. It was a great gamble to take as a man as volatile to the conservative group as Kido into his coalition, but such men would settle for a return to the shogunate for they acquiesced in moving Japan forward. Tagagi swirled the crystal glass of champagne around before giving in to the sly man's offer. Bring us another bottle to celebrate a new ally. How great. It's more support. Hey, you know what? I said I would do this, so let's go in and boost this up just a wee bit more. Just a wee bit. Just a tiny bit. We're going to continue getting that hurt, but let's get below 700 billion. That would be probably good for debt. Actually, that would probably be very, very good. Construction. Oh, there goes SS Oberaschnitt, Auslan. Goodbye. Democracy returns. Wow, democracy in Italy. <clears throat> hey, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Still can't build in any, any other areas. Ooh, maybe up here? No. Can we build up here? No. Um, that's America. Hawaii? Hawaii? Yes. Uh, over here? Yes, please. Yeah, keep building up some more civilian factories. That's good for the business. Hopefully. Um, okay, Jap.103.8. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. Good, good, good. These guys are going to produce so much for us. So totally. Oh, look, basic fire control system is nice. Mm, let's grab some of that, because we can. Only minus 4%. And beginning the second phase. Now that our li liberalizing bloc proper solidified its ranks and its internal structure, the Admiral can move on to the next phase of power consolidation, namely how to deal with the Ikeda and Kido strongholds proper instead of merely picking off their scraps. We could either choose to formally acquiesce Ikido and Ikeda's compromises, or alternatively, we could sideline them in favor of our own bloc, taking the lead. Get political power or approval, let's see, was it House of Peers approval or public approval? I think it was public approval, but... Yep, public approval. So we could do this stuff, we could do on our own. Our power has increased significantly, which would not be bad. I kind of like that, but we'll see what happens incorporating Kido. Pakistan becomes independent. Good job, Pakistan. Stability. Ooh, wow. Our liberal liberal factions power increases significantly. A coalition of equals. Yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to go this way, though, just because it just makes more sense for the direction we're going. So, If we were to play as Takagi again, then I would probably choose the right side here. i choose on our own as well as strength and totality as well as maybe targeting sweeps. Or maybe even just army payrolls. I don't know. We'll see what happens if I ever play this. I probably will play as Japan again. Probably not as Takagi anytime soon. But I promise eventually again. A minus 700 billion. And that's great news. Great, great news. So, we could keep doing going with this. But I don't want to lose more political power for now. Stability is nice. Yeah, we're going to wait. I want to do some more of this stuff. Looking closer to mobilization laws. GDP receive a small boost. I like this. Let's try this one. So, remove the tr barriers in trading. The co-prosperity sphere, while designed to foster Asian economic growth naturally under our very, very, very close oversight, is still very much facing wartime restrictions courtesy of previous administrations. Moreover, some local army garrisons have vested interest in ensuring their chokeholds through black market dominance and off the books re provisions remaining untouched. While this benefits the pockets of individuals, it does not benefit Japan. In fact, it hurts our ability to placate the pockets of the sphere's member states. <clears throat> Hence, our cabinet has proposed to lift wartime trading and resource restrictions in order to facilitate a liberalized flow of goods and capital, allowing for businesses to thrive and fully capitalize on immense resource wealth from the, that the sphere offers. From Beijing to Bangkulu, the Japanese business will flourish, and so will the Japanese people. Very nice. Export focus, huh? Not bad. We shall see what happens. You know, there is a little bit of fascist support here. Inou, huh? Inori? A letter from Nanjing to our Asian brothers. <clears throat> A unique situation has developed as to late in the southwestern region. We felt it our duty as a proud member of the East Asian Co Prosperity Sphere to inform you, your government, and your most royal emperor of the nature of the situation. Our most recent intelligence suggests that this insane criminal, by the name of Long Yun, has escaped from prison and, along with a small handful of bandits, occupied the Xin Nan territory. <coughs> My apologies. Despite lack of equipment, popular support, and military expertise, these disorganized brigands have won a baffling victory and disposed of General Lu Han. His current whereabouts are unknown. We wish to make it clear that the Republic of 
China's army is more than capable of crushing a few feeble hordes. It would be foolish to discard preparation in its entirety as such. We humbly request a temporary expansion of the Chinese military to crush this inconsequential nuisance. Additionally, we will transfer oversight of the remaining warlords to Japanese authorities to ensure continued peace and prosperity to victory the leg legislative yuan of the Republic of China. How much troubles could a few bandits be? Now, I don't know what to do with those guys. That's, I know people have talked about this before, but I don't really know anything about the National Protection Army. But I, what I do know is I should play as them someday. Because they got hit and run tactics. That looks really cool. Yeah. There's so many nations in TNO. Like, I've gone through quite a few Russian unifiers. And they're a lot of fun. But there's still even more Russian unifiers I've not touched yet. I've got to play as the Republic of China. I could play as Japan again someday. I got to play as Germany at least three, four, five more times because of all the different leaders. But I'm waiting for Germany. I got to play as eh, maybe the French state. We'll see what happens with the French state. They're okay. They're not great, I think, just because they always lose against Burgundy. So let's see. Grab some some of that. Why not? Move trading barriers, and then assert resource dominance. That's not bad. Keep hold of key industries. It's not bad either. Returning seized assets? Might as well, right? The industrial sectors of Western Japan have been the backbone of our industry, especially in the automotive and electronics industries. However, they are drain on our state coffers. Well, so privatizing some of these industries would be a good way to facilitate greater economic globalization. Furthermore, it is a good opportunity for us to see the effects of privatization when applied to the unique context of Japan. While we may run into opposition from reform bureaucrats, some of them who have argued that the automotive and electronic industries are still essential industries, our support from the moderates within the diet should be enough to overwhelm their opposition. This move wouldn't hurt our standing with the Zaibatsu allies, such as Mitsubishi, either. Not bad. So we lose two military factories and get two civilian factories. If that's the case, maybe we should not have built up so many civilian factories. I will build some more in exchange. Just because... Actually, I'm going to build... Maybe three if we have the space for it. Just because I want to make sure that we have enough production on, like, transport helicopters and such. Which is going okay. Let's see. Copters. Basic art. Oh, man. Oh, what's happening? The Indonesian. Oh, we prefer independence with... Oh, no. We must react swiftly. Oh, crud. Can we get this one done? Oh, we, we won't have time to get that one done. Actually, we, we will. You know what? We'll come back to return these assets. So, let's go ahead and do this first. Oh, it's over here. Cool. Observe and report. Yeah, that's what we have to do. Reports from the front line show that the troops of Sukarno's faction are too battered to push major offenses, and their chances of winning are becoming slimmer with each passing day. Another thing noted was Sukarno's absence from the commanding headquarters itself, with his attempts to contact him met with no replies or incoherent responses. Therefore, with these observations in mind, the military has advised us that the best course of action is to act as an, as an observer role, allowing the civil war to involve without much interventio or intervention and preventing us from being on the losing side. However, if possible, Jap Japanese forces stationed nearby should be prioritized and secure Japanese assets. we got a lot of political power. Can I go to war? I want to help you guys out. Please let me go help you out. Why not? No, I want to help out. I want to get involved. I like that flag. That's pretty unique, I'd say. That's a pretty unique flag for the North Borneo administration. Negotiate licenses. What is this? Critical supply shortage. That's good. Disorganized forces. If America helps them out, then that's... Helps the free Indonesians out. That's not good for us. But if they don't, then that's good for... Then, you know, whatever. <laughs> pretty much. Whatever. Come on. I want to just... Come on. We've got the PP for it. 17 days. Hey, you know what? I'm going to invest it back into here. 380 is not bad. Especially since we have 3.4 some billion. So, if we have a large stack of money, like over 3 billion, then I'll invest it into the GDP. If we have anything less than 3 billion, then I'll invest it into the national debt. And by investing it, I mean paying off. Come on, let's get through this focus quickly. Oh, it's 35 days? Oh, that's so long. That's so long. After this, we'll probably go with, especially if we can send volunteer forces, I'll probably send gunship support. Get even more attack. That's not bad either. Victory for the Front de Democrato. Ooh! Has Mateo T been avenged? Ooh, military austerity. Um, nope. Even though that does hurt our ability to produce stuff. Whatever. Come on, Indonesia. You gotta hold out against the free Indonesians. <clears throat> It's not bad. Not bad. Oh, there goes... Oh, what's happening in Central Siberia? Oh, there's Tomsk. That's a big old Tomsk. No Siberia. So the Durban report. Disquiet in Papua? As expected. Uh, the Star Sprangled Eyes. The death of Duty. Sent in the Navy? Ooh, as expected. Let's do that one. Reports from the front line show that Sukarno's factions are invigorated after the victory at Surabaya and contain the potential to quickly 
and the Civil War supported by a stronger force. With these observations in mind, it has been decided that the military will intervene on Sukarno's behalf by deploying all available forces to assist him. Such an operation includes the land forces working in tandem with Sukarno's troops alongside of the Navy and Air Force to blockade supply ports and bombard enemy positions. Alongside that, equipment such as guns, artillery, motorized vehicles will be supplied to the replenish and bolster the strength of Sukarno's forces. With these measures in place, we may be able to suppress Sukarno's advantage and crush the insurgents swiftly. Observe and report. Conflict roared across Indonesia and burning in pro pyres of the archipelago were vivid in the Prime Minister's daydreams. He could see the anarchy and chaos ripping apart the island chain and dismantling the once rich and resourceful Japanese ally. The country was divided between factions, armies, militias, and rival governments, a message Japan had tried to understand before anyone else could. The General Staff sat with the Prime Minister eager to discuss what actions should be taken to intervene. The General throffed at the at mouth with ideas of airstrikes and invasion plans, and the Admirals could not sit o over thoughts of marine assaults and naval incursions. Sat at the head of the table. He could see the hysteria of the war ahead of him. He cleared his throat and the room fell silent in a brief moment. He began explaining the disorganized findings of Japanese reconnaissance, and the attention of the general staff to the briefings was not uh, was undivided. They listened diligently, but seemed to scribble down notes for their own benefit, perhaps focusing on their opportunities for infamy in the conflict abroad. The Prime Minister felt alone and tired as he continued speaking, growing bored of the immaturity of the general staff as they seemed to draft plans to become war heroes rather than focusing on the crisis at hand. Questions were thrown back and forth, which were only followed by more scribbles of their own. Each infuriating the Prime Minister more. Growing bitter, he dismissed the briefing as a cold shiver ran up his spine. He licked his lips and pouted, trying to make sense of the rushing ideas. A threat to the Emperor's pal peace, he thought, but he feared the worst was yet to come. The situation develops. Oh, come on. We haven't been at war since we helped out the Mongolians, our allies, Meng Mengjiang. Oh, minus 21 billion, though. Ooh, that's nice. We could just like, slash civilian spending and cut off the entire construction budget. Which we actually we could. We actually could do that, since we do have quite a few factories here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, well, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 full lines. That's so good. Oh, hello. So less than 3 billion? We shall cut the debt with that. And actually, since we're here, what is our deficit? IFVs, which is fine. Main battle tanks is not looking good. <clears throat> Artillery is really not looking good. And we're still training in... We could probably stop training for now. Alright, so division-wise, we are using, I believe, the square divisions here. 16 combat width. So let's replace you with artillery. Oh, actually, we don't have any artillery, do we? Well, that's not good. If that's the case, we have plenty of enough guns for now, right? We have plenty of guns. Wait, do we have enough plenty of guns? Hold on. Oh, yeah, we do. That's good. Transport helicopters. We definitely need more support equipment. And basic artillery. We only have basic artillery. We're going to leave four on here for now. That's fine. Improved anti tank. Yeah, that doesn't make too much every day, so we're going to leave it like that. Maybe, you know what, go down to five. There you go. That's not too bad. Support equipment, go up to two more. Yeah, hmm. Leave you at, leave you at one for now. So get some more artillery. Artillery is going to be king for what we need, as expected. Send in the Navy. While war rages throughout the islands of Indonesia, it is important for us to keep our own sailors and cargo safe from marauding rebels or pirates. We will begin movement of Imperial Navy groups to the Java Sea and the island streets to protect our own ships from the conflict. With enough warships, we could deter some of the RFI's forces while traveling by sea and keep them out of nearby island chains. Sukarno triumphs. With the recent conclusion of the Battle of Subayara, Surabaya, the General Staff gathered in the Prime Minister's office to discuss the future of Japanese intervention in the Indonesian War. The General Staff, staff sat scattered across the room, some reclining in their leather chairs, others standing upright to examine recently dusted bookshelves. The attention in the room seemed to be divided until Prime Minister had cleared his throat and began speaking. Gentlemen, we believe that Sukarno is the man to look back uh, and to back in the Indonesian conflict. He has proven himself loyal and resourceful to us already, and his confidence is a tool we can exploit further in the affairs of the archipelago. Tsuchichi Takagi drew the files from his cabinet, his papers full of information of Sukarno's potential grasp. Uh, eventually, military evaluating military capabilities and predictions of success dependent on Japanese intervention. Members of the general staff strolled over to S Takagi's desk and flicked through the files for a short while, nodding their heads at the streams of numbers and charts as if they understood it. They were convinced it seemed as if they looked back at, up at the prime minister with small grins. Takagi waved his finger at the group of men and told them to plans told them plans of intervention. After listening diligently, suggestions were thrown across the room, and his ideas, initial ideas were silenced by the officers' enthusiastic bickering over stratagem. The Prime Minister sat behind the desk, not able to get a word into the debates between the General Staff, but reclined with general satisfaction. Now he had support of these jingoists to sail into the hearts of the Indonesian conflict, our reliable friend. Oh, Breton leadership, how's this news? Um, isn't he the guy, the default leader already? I think he is, because I did try Brittany once, but it seemed kind of boring, and actually very laggy if you keep open the Decisions tab, which is... Not ideal, but, you know, whatever. Let's go with that. And actually, industry. It is 65. Why did I neglect this? Why have I neglected this so much? Because it's okay. Whatever. Oh, free Indonesia. Indonesia is doing pretty darn well, I'd say, though. They don't, probably don't need our help 
But we basically are forced to take these focuses anyways because we can't do our other focuses, which is, eh, it's okay. At least the game forces you to focus on stuff like this. 0.5, not bad. 0.25 as we examined the other day. Not bad. Ooh, two more ships. Where are these? A light cruiser and a destroyer? Well, we'll throw you right here then. Oh, we have another one? Immediately? Okay, cool. Destroyer? Uh, oh, we have another one too. Wait, how are we making these light cruisers so fast? What the heck? Um, We're trying to make carriers in Yamamoto classes, but okay. Sure, why not? We'll take them. I'll take whatever. Not bad. A little bit of lag. Oh, shnikes! What's Republic of China? Uh, let's see. I did say the smaller one. We do invest in growth. There you go. Oh, what's going on? And what? Uh... Wait, hold up. Wait, what? Did you rebel? What the heck? Oh, they just took over the territory. Oh crap! That is not good. Oh, actually, you know what? Have everyone hold. Well, they're moving any anyways. It doesn't matter. You guys come over here as well. You guys come over here. Yeah, you guys are fine over there. Are you still under us or not? <clears throat> you are. So the Republic of China is going rogue now. Well, that's not good. Yeah, we lost it all. Holy crap. Well, that's not good. You have an action an upgrade? Sending the navy? Nah, not really. Cool. <clears throat> Marine landing operations. Even with the rising sun flag falling across the waterways of Indonesia, the rebels are continuing to score victories and are gaining control over more and more towns each day, becoming a severe threat to stability across other members of the co-prosperity sphere. The Marines will be sending across Indonesia to turn the tide and drive the FRI back into the caves and jungles. The Imperial Japanese Navy deploys. It was a calm day of sailing for a hard zone in the Celebes Sea. The water still rocking his fishing boat slowly as he sat in the water waiting for the perfect catch. The pulsing sea was a deep and mystical as Zurazi was cradled in his fishing boat, beguiled by the humming wave song beneath him. Just as Harjo reclining in a small boat and the sea was vaporously exhausting or exhaling its mist, dark shadows appeared to sluggishly haul themselves across his lazy vision. They hulked and grew into the distance, growing larger by the second, quickly awakened from his dozy rest. Harjo scampered from what now seemed to appear to be once clear waters. <clears throat> Dozens of steel giants, IJ, and warships armed to the teeth, honking deep and booming horns that shook him to the core and caused his vessel to shudder. The great metal monsters cut through the waters that dwarfed Harjo's frail boat, cl rushing closer, closer to in his path. He clambered to start his motor, pulling away with sweaty haste, glancing back up at the warships crashing in his direction every few seconds. The sleek paint and metal shape of the ships were pillars in the ocean, great monoliths of imperial strength. Bursting through the sh shrouds of mist, they loomed over him and cut through the foamy waters at lightning speeds. Finally, the motor coughed into action, and Harjo scurried towards the coastline in an animal pace. The warships were so charging in a steel blockade, honked once more, shaking his every bone and shuddering him as he rushed further into Indonesian waters. He fought against the waters once that calmed him, bouncing off the smallest of the waves in a fearful dash to the shore. The thundering blast of the naval horn had cleaved any sense of safety he had had in those waters and carved the adrenal awe of wartime fear into his callow heart. Naval supremacy is assured. This is not good. China, what are you doing? Bunch of fascists. Fascists against our more authoritarian democratic regime. Well, I was going to help out China if they stayed as their puppet, but <clears throat> whatever. But you know what I haven't talked about in a while? Stability. Look at that. 57%. That is so good. Look at that. We get more daily political power from that. Organization. Division organization. Division recovery rate. Construction speed. Factory output. Resistance in occupied territories goes down, down, down. Or it's lesser. has lesser effects, I should really say. Second so company three offers from Rome. What the heck from Rome? In recent months following Italian dem democratization, we've been approached by the Italians with envoys uh, with overtures of friendship and cooperation. While we enjoyed warm relations with the Italians ever since their break from the Nazis in the 1950s, this latest development represents the golden opportunity to bring the Italian Empire firmly into our sphere, with the control over the Suez, dominance of the Mediterranean, and a colonial empire that stretches from Tunis to the Horn. Italy would make it a valuable addition to the co-prosperity sphere, turning the sphere into a truly global organization. Furthermore, the effects of gaining an ally right on the borders of the right cannot be overstated. Every available effort should be made to bring the Italians into the co-prosperity sphere, less this opportunity Opportunity slips from our grasp or worse fall into the hands of our enemies. Get me the ambassador. Yeah! What is this? Hoi Four in like the 1930s or 40s where Italy joins the Japanese faction if they don't join the Germans? Nice. Cheetah's looking like a mess. The Divine Mandate of Siberia's though is looking like a mess. Jap Low Trees, point forty one point T. Okay, cool. Uh, no, you're still trucking on over. Yeah, get over here quickly, guys. I want to send you guys back to. Over here. Come here. 
That'd be good. Can I send volunteers yet? I mean, they're doing really well. They probably really don't need us, but... Never mind. Reports from Washington. While we've begun efforts to woo the Italians into our alliance, we've recently received info from the U.S. is doing the same, hoping to bring the Italians into the OFM. This cannot be allowed to pass. Italian entry into the OFM would be a major boon to the Americans, gathering, guaranteeing them a foothold in Europe and heralding a massive victory for the so-called free world. Every available resource must be used to bring the Italians into the co-prosperity sphere, or at the very least to prevent the Americans from bringing them into the OFM. We cannot let the Americans one-up us. They're running out of manpower, though. Oh, they only have two divisions up here. Oh, crud. Oh, and the free Indonesians have way more. Way more. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. No, that's Indonesia. Okay. Okay, so this is the North Borneo administration. I thought these guys were fighting, but they're not. Indonesia has quite a few guys. These guys, not so much. Okay, that was my bad. 39,000 versus 108,000. That's a lot more, though. Oof. Wait, where's Italy? Do we have an Italian focus tree? No. No. Oh, I want Italy. How do we get Italy? I want Italy. Learning from the Bush War, many strategists in the command have noted the duplicity of the conflict with the FRI in the South African War. Both the Germans and Americans used helicopters as the fullest in the Bush War, and so we shall defeat these rebels. Incendiary weapons used during the war are also being requested by generals in Indonesia. This too will be provided to flush out the rebels from any hideout. Cool. Put the mad dog down. Oh. Under the Chinese government, under Guo Zong Wu, has failed to stop the mad crusade of Long Yun. We must take matters into our own hands and put the rabid dog down before damage is caused to our Chinese subjects and, more importantly, our economic assets in China. We'll join the war against them? Cool. But they need me more than 50% surrender progress, and I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm if I haven't said so already. My apologies. The Battle of Bet Blitar. Rain pummeled down in the dark jungles of Borneo as a detachment of SNLF. Troops closed in around a secret free Indonesian military encampment. The downpour is hammered against the jungle leaves, and the sky grumbled with a thick and misty thunder. The tumbling growls of the dark sky were lit with strikes of electric white lightning that mon momentarily revealed the position of the stalking Japanese marines, but did not grasp the attention of the oblivious men ahead. The Indonesian militias were located at the bottom of a small valley. The encampment consisted of half a dozen tents surrounding a weak fire. Most of the little militiamen were scattered around the encampment, smoking cigarettes, playing cards, or watching the weather in the distance. Now prepared for the enemy, never mind the team of Japanese marines approaching the camp. They are docile and passive, unaware of the slowly creeping SNLF hunters stalking them. Let's see, cool. Uh, yeah, we probably dealt with that small amount. Cool. The Japanese troops silently gathered in small groups and coordinated an attack. There was a moment of radio silence and lightning struck. In the cover of thunder crack, the rifle team shot a militia man on the periphery and dragged his lifeless body into the dense jungle vegetation, moving like shadows in the night. Dressed up in a deep and dark green camouflage, the Japanese Marines skulked further into the camp, killing the unaware Indonesian fighters in quick succession, spraying their blood on canvas tents as well as every well timed deadly shot. The SNLF moved quickly throughout the camp, emerging from the shadows and killing more of the unwilling or unwitting militia men. Thunder continued to erupt throughout the night. And Lightning streaks forked through the distant sky. Torrential rain rushed from above, and the remains of the campfire still crackled as it was put out. It missed the deluge of the mon jungle's monsoon weather. An odd silence fell upon the camp that seemed louder and louder with the crashing rainfall. The marines grouped up after searching the tents and disappeared in the darkened vegetation, submerging into the night. What use is untrained rabble? Their use is cannon fodder. Cannon fodder, I should say. So, which, we're using triangular divisions to help put down resistance. I'm going to use my political power right now, or army XP, to get rid of this. That makes no sense for this to have that. And this will actually save us on artillery, which is being drained right now. Do we have enough support equipment, support equipment for this? No. <laughs> but that'll be better than using artillery. So now we got to really raise up support equipment in exchange. The American San Swan Song. The U.S. and their lapdogs and OFN have made several overtures towards the Italians to woo them into their alliance, including offers of technology and favorable access to key resources. We need to take more action to bring Rome to our side, or at the very least, prevent those dastardly Americans from bringing them into their sphere. Where is the ambassador? Well, we can't do anything about it. We didn't get any options, did we? I don't think we did. Like, we got sympathetic tradition. Battle for Italy. Um, U.S. has already begun its efforts to put Italy to the OFN. Yet our offer to join the code prosperity sphere is better. Can we, like, is there anything we could do against with these guys? Negotiate alliances? No. They're led by Nenny. There's nothing we could do, is there? It's head of government, but that's just the head of government stuff. Actually, if, not, we, if we have non-existent support, then why don't we just do stuff with this? Let's see. If we do that, so we have 51. Embellish. Well, I guess I did nothing. Oof. Let's see. Oh, whatever. We could launch a propaganda campaign. Let's go and lower Kaya's support, though. Oh, wait. 50. Oh. Hey, th we, at least we got a little bit more now. It's not bad. Whatever. But seriously, how do we do stuff with Italy? There's no, there's no options here. Maybe we can't do anything. Maybe that's just already in the game that we can't do stuff yet. Maybe in the future we can but bring them into our faction, but... I'm seeing no focuses that could allow us to do so. Because this is the entire tree. 
As long as the game doesn't lag. Can I zoom up, game? Cool. Yeah, this is the entire tree. I mean, there's nothing we can do. <clears throat> the battle for Italy. Could Italy be the tipping point in the Cold War? Yeah, probably. We get about one political power every day. Not bad. Sympathetic tradition. It's not bad. Yeah, China's not in our faction anymore, which is really disappointing, but whatever. If we do have to end up fighting them, I'm going to go ahead and not deploy you guys. Where's my Marines? Marines fighting the mountains is probably not a good idea, but there you go. Oh, actually, tanks. I'm not deploying tanks to China. There, There's too many mountains here to do that. Kunming, huh? Cool. Learning from the Bush War. Have some coffee, too. And there goes Kazakhstan. Do we need both? Yes, we do. So, this quiet in Papua. As the Indonesian war dies down, reports from local paramilitary forces in Papua have noticed a significant agitation among the natives of the island. Perhaps spurred on by the fighters across Indonesia, the situation is developing poorly at a rapid pace. We should send some military assistance as backup, although it seems rather unnecessary. <clears throat> cool. We have 1.5, so cut down the debt. Airborne operations in Kalimantan. The buzzing chop of the helicopter blades whipped a thick air around the rural areas of Java, the largest target of the IJA airborne forces. Scratching that the radio chatter began to buzz over the general commotion of the town's people below, and the Japanese troops began to cock the rifles and prime their weapons as they approached the village. The clicks, crunches, and cracks of ammunition began sharply, and the helicopters became loud as the peasants were in sight. Zooming in in droves, the helicopters drawn over the misty horizon and opened fire on the settlement below as villagers began to notice a horror in the sky. The Japanese approved the order to rain hell upon the village, and once the airborne units were within 100 yards of the town, they began to decimate the defenseless town's folks above. The explosives fired from the helicopters incinerated homes and shelters, melting the flesh off those unable to escape from the smoldering rubble. Machine gun fire chewed apart the bodies of those unable to outrun the roars of the weapons, cleaving through entire families at, at a time they, as they scurried away. Small arms fire picked off those who cowered behind debris and were not fortunate enough to remain hidden to the besieging IJA aerial assault. The wall Wails and screams of the peasants were not inaudible, but they were drowned out by the blasting flames and chopper, chopping helicopter blades that had obliterated all that lived on the ground below. The helicopters eventually landed, and the ground teams began to search for any life still clinging on to the remains of the village. The screams from those dying, still dying, were silenced of brutal execution trophies, and the photographs were taken from the dead, and mercy often came at the end of a loaded gun. It's almost too easy. Well, yeah, they're just cannon fodder. What do you expect? <laughs> a little bit ahead of time. I might as well grab that. We'll probably get some more artillery support. Next as well. Oh, wait. Oh, no, wait. Industry stuff. Industry. Mr. Mokalover. More industry. Come on. More industry. Ooh, that's less than 20 billion now. What happened? Huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I mean, we're building a lot of places up here, so. Not bad. Japan has a lot of infrastructure, except in here. But even then, they're still pretty good. <clears throat> wow. We're starting to run out of places to build. If that's the case. I'm going to actually cut the construction budget a little bit. Just by 10%. There we go. That's a little better. But how many lines do we still have? Because we don't need this many lines, probably, right? Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, tw eleven. Not bad. You know what? How much would that put us at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This one's ten. Ten. One, two, three, four, five. Ten some. Not bad. Not bad at all. Good. Offer amount to oil? Wait, what is this? Oh, yeah. Now we can do stuff? Okay, yeah. Totally. Yeah, we'll offer a lot of oil. At least we have options here. I mean, I'm going to take them if we've got the political power for it. Why not, you know? Army speed, not too bad either. Ooh, for you guys. Well, look at China still doing okay. I'm going to train. Oh, we could train. I need more army XP. Artillery is doing a lot better, though, which is great. We need more fighters. Need more tactical bombers too. Fighters, artillery, IVs. Ooh, what is this? I'm not sure which one this does. I'm gonna assume this the top one allows us to go to war as well, so. Just quiet in Papua. Star Spangled Eyes, security forces on Papua after a series of deadly attacks have located cache of weapons deep within the jungle. Truckloads of weaponry in a small radio tower confirmed our worst suspicions. The Papuans are getting outside help. The Ken Pai Tai must be dispatched immediately, and harsh measures will be needed to enact to root out these gorillas. Oh boy. Moment in the undergrowth. The sweltering island of New Guinea is not a pleasant place to be in. Captain Kawashima of the F. Kikan knew this all too well. It had been a week since he had been summoned to the tropical hell following rumors of instability in the area. He was to watch for suspicious activity among the locals and any signs of American aid coming their way. This meant holding up in a village shack with a tube light hanging from the ceiling and a single old telephone far away from civilization. 
Experience with the INA had taught him to integrate, ingratiate himself with the locals, especially former soldiers, and most of the actual work for look, of looking for any suspicious activity was done by recruiting runners, one of whom the captain saw running towards him. And something of a panic, he handed over a sheaf of new, no, no papers with names and locations scribbled on them in broken Japanese. On the sheet were names of village men who had gone missing in the groups when entering the jungle, and whose names of families were strangely unconcerned. The next two sheets detailed locations of where loud noises were reported, rather like gunshots, as he read through. <clears throat> Captain Ka Kawashima felt a chill running down his back despite the humid heat. This had all been the telltale signs of a rebel organization. It was the last sheet, however, that was most worrying. A picture of a dinged up box that had washed up the shore. The captain squinted as he struggled to read the text on the, uh, on the side of the box, and then it hit him. It was in English, and though kicked in mud, he could make out the 762mm OFM. The captain rose to his feet and sprang up Kyoto, the next day receiving orders to use his network to infiltrate the rebel groups and gather intel, to be forwarded to the Kenpai Tei. A week later, in the middle of midnight, an Australian submarine surfaced near a beach, and three boxes floated to the waiting rebels. One of them pulled out a revolver, shot the commander, and arrested the others. With a flash, searchlights, searchlights on board, four patrol ships led up the area where the submarine was attempted to dive, surrounding the sea. Soon after, the Kenpai Tei extracted what remained, just like old times. Very good. Alright, so now we have... That's still less than 3 billion. Cut down on that stuff. That'll be okay for now. Good. Hey, 90% stability is bueno, bueno, bueno. Let's grab some more output. And free repairs was nice too, right? Minus 23 billion is not bad. Oh, China is slowly still losing more and more. Um, Let's take a look. Happy 1966 though, everyone. Finally got to 66. The Western Insurrection. They are nowhere near capitulating though. Wow. 6,000. They've lost 9,000. They actually don't have a really large army, which I guess makes sense, you know. Three days left, not bad, and it gets some gunship support. Then we'll probably go some area defense because we can. But unfortunately for me, I'm all out of coffee. How sad. Next up, and the Silent War. Every day, the situation in Papua becomes more tense. Ambushes led by the CIA trained Papuans block the jungle roads. Operations in the, in the foothills blow American built bases to smithereens. Ken Pai Tai agents are on high alert for the Western opponents. We must pour as many intelligence officers and the Ken Pai Tai into Papua to stop the CIA and the rebels. Yep, probably have to do that. That'd probably be good. This is February, though. Still probably pretty warm down here in the jungle. And we should be able to do this soon. Come on. And... One more day, maybe. Right? One day left. Cool. Not too bad. There we go. Have the PM visit Rome? Oh, we're starting to run out of political power now. Welcome Italy to the National Diet. Mm, we get one a day, so let's go have the PM visit Rome. Let's do that. And let's do some intelligence agency stuff. Ken Pai Tang, cool. Let's go ahead and grab some modernized department. Start working on this stuff, because we can. Inter-service rivalry in the South Sea. Pushing his way through the deck of a patrol vessel was a strange sight. An officer of the IJA, dressed head to toe in formal attire as if on a diplomatic mission. <clears throat> the one, the man, the one Ueda... Yashitake held nothing but disdain for the Navy and those who served in it. In his view, he had taken all the glory of the World War II, and in that glory, did not did, not, did nothing but indulge itself on the spoils of victory. Indonesia was at war, and they couldn't be bothered to protect one of J Japan's brotherly nations from the imperialistic tendrils of American money and firepower. Something on the grimly, grimy desk, he pushed past the sailors lifting up a fishing net and man dragging around a cargo container until he reached a small cabin hidden in the steel and steam of the patrol boat. He peered inside and saw what he was looking for, a table surrounded by local commanders of the Imperial Japanese Navy meant to be overseeing the waters around Indonesia's east. Udea claimed their attention in an instant, shouting, What are you people doing? American men and supplies are flowing into Port Mosby, piercing into the heart of a brotherhood of nations, and you people are sitting here doing exactly what? Their own admirals didn't respond to his accusation, but one whispered to another, one of the army's men, so surely. Udea twitched in anger, but just as he was about to continue his raving, his pager buzzed. He turned around for a quick leap, hitting his head on a broken pipe hanging over a doorway on his way out. Alex, that's gotta hurt. The admiral's tense but amused, turned back to each other. One remark, he doesn't understand, we have no side in the conflict. It doesn't matter if the Americans want to waste the resources supporting one despot over another. Another, pulling his hands together and leaning towards, responded, but he does have a point. The more money the Americans dump on Hata, the more influence they have over him. We cannot let them pierce our alliance. Over the hissing of steam below them, a senior admiral at the table, a mentor figure to the rest, spoke up and gave his opinion. Escalate the patrols. Maybe this is just information. Escalate the patrols. We're getting involved. I want to get involved, man. Operations of the Coral Sea. Udea, standing present on the bow of the patrol vessels, watched on the horizon. The wath, the wath, the white, frothing waves the boat formed as it cut through the ocean exhilarated him, so much so that I wasn't even mad when a stream of sea spray crashed into his suit. 
Those admirals, warlords of the sea, agreed that his verdict, after much wrangling and much shouting in the depths of the ship, the wind cracked against the keel, the dark clouds grew overhead, the patrol vessel was to continue to unstrup before dropping him at his destination, and in truth he was filled with boyish glee at the thought of fleeing or feeling the raucous power in all the Empire's riders of the tide. His bout of ethereal delusions of grandeur were cut short by the sight of an object in the waves, a boat not of the Empire's colors. Udeo couldn't believe his luck, and they found one, and Udeo was here to witness it. After several minutes of silence, the ships communicating with each other, the Japanese patrol vessel gently sailed up to the foreign craft as expected it was an American transport disguised as a civilian ship, loaded with fuel, ammunition, food, radios, and a few advisors. Sickening, sickening, sickening. The Pacific is a Japanese lake, and these decadent fools won't accept it as such. The ships sat next to each other, and the cyclonic waves churning underneath. The Japanese sailors stared at the American ones, some with an amusement on their faces, some with disgust. Udea's expression was one of hatred. The Japanese seamen boarded the American transport, taking prisoner of the sailors on board and confiscating the material hidden in the transport's confines. Udea ordered the transport himself, grasping one sailor by the shoulder and dragging him to the nearest radio. The Americans would know, the Americans would know that they would no longer be tolerated. Their ships would be torn from the waves, their sailors locked away as war prisoners. Blood will rule the waves for anyone who does not bow to the rising sun, he whispered to himself as he flickered the device on. Their army was right all along. We lose political power, which actually I don't want to lose, but we got some more war support. Now, I don't want to escalate tensions with the Americans too much, but obviously, we just did. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, apparently, we just took their, prison, their soldiers prisoner, or, you know, civilian transport prisoner. Oh, you guys go ahead and go home. Another destroyer, cool. And another just How are we getting all these destroyers? Where are you being made? I'm not making... I don't think I'm making... Maybe I am making destroyers. Black cruisers? Sure. Wait, like... Well, hold on. We're making the Yamato class, which is a battleship, I thought. It's a refit, early battleship hull. And we're making you carrier hull. Do we have... I don't see any other naval stuff here. No? Who's making these ships? Are we being gifted ships? That's kind of cool if we are, but... I can't imagine they're that great, but hey, well, I'll, ta I'll take them, you know? Welcome Italy to the National Diet. We have any more money? Hey, yeah. Invest. There you go. That's not bad. That's not great, but not bad. Silent Warp, and then Sukarno's PR makeover. Sukarno's reputation among the Indonesian populace has been erupt for years, but his fiasco has killed nearly any support for him in his current administration. He now turns to us for help. In an attempt to salvage what's left his crumbling popularity, media is an effective tool in turning the one around turning around one's public appeal, and so we shall assist them on the front. Propaganda leaflets will be distributed to all possible areas, and the press shall be coerced into formulating pro Sukarno pieces. With these measures in hand, perhaps the people will regain some confidence for Sukarno and his presidency. Nice. And yes, I did that a few days ago. So we can get to the next focus, but whatever. And let's grab some of this. Resource efficiency gains always pretty good to get. Oh, let's do this. Let's, can we do this one? No. Oh, our actions in progress. Modernize the department. Economic development. Economy development, I guess. Please. Oh, so how was this going to happen? Like, Italy? How's, how, how are things going? Uh, let's do it against you guys, I guess. The Germans we don't like. And the Americans. It's going to take forever to do, but whatever. I don't really care. Oh, we, could be, we could become a spy master. Agency three different branches, huh? It's not bad. Oh, there goes those guys. Germany's on a roll. Trying to stamp out any sort of resistance to the rule. Whoa! Minus 41 billion. What happened here? What happened? How did we get that much more? Did we slash the budget more? That's really awesome. Holy crap. I love rooting out corruption. Oh, that's a long... Oh, 70 day focus. What is this? Base game? Oh, why do you hurt me so much? Oh my goodness. I was like, when is the next focus done? <clears throat> Holy cow. That is painful. That is very painful for me. Oh my goodness, 70 day focus and TNO? My worst dreams have been confirmed. Oh, oh no. Oh, actually the Republic of China has done very well. Holy crap. The National Protection uh, uh, Army or Alliance. They're dead. Wow. Okay, I was not expecting that at all. Um... Okay, so they're back in their sphere. So they... Okay, so that's interesting. I did not know that. That they leave your faction to deal with the rebels, but then they rejoin you once everything's done. That's actually really cool. That's actually really, really cool. I did not know that. Hey, the more you know. Artillery is looking a lot better. Let's see. Anything else? Helicopters. We got some in reserve. That's good. Yeah, this is very weird waiting this long now. <laughs> it feels very weird. Okay, Dietzlen. Okay, so when is this action done? Because I would like to welcome Italy to the national diet. Over three billion, I said. If we had over three billion, I'd invest into G into GDP. So, exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, so how's Goring doing? He's still doing his focuses. Oh, so far he's doing really well with his focuses. Oh wow, look at all this. How does he do War Plan A? 
War Plan Zero has been completed. We have submitted our plans in Europe. Cool. So we're going to watch him t continue doing everything. He oh, he's Plan Zero. Oh, he has to complete that first. That's right. Oh, he's doing this now. A denunciation from the Urals. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has received a notice of public diplomatic condemnation from an entity calling itself the West Siberian People's Republic. This government ruling from its seat in the eastern city of two men claims citizenship to the fallen Soviet Union and is led by the chairman of the Communist Party, Lazar Kaganovich, which claims an anti-revisionist orientation. The message undoubtedly authored with heavy influence from the chairman reads as follows. The Empire of Japan, one of the most foremost uh, imperialist powers on earth, is one of the most foulest enemies of the global proletariat. Under the guise of opposition to European imperialism, it is military occupied and incorporated into its co-prosperity sphere a number of countries in Asia, only to further, uh, the, the further their enslavement under its own rule. Its crimes, including the invasion and occupation and subjugation of China and the massacre of its inhabitants, the systematic extraction and the resources of Manchuria and Southeast Asia for its own ends, the widespread use of slavery in the form of the Romusha and similar systems, the sponsorship of murderous fascists in the former Soviet Union, the suppression of people's movements in Japan and abroad, and too many of other crimes to account, the Japanese bourgeoisie have effectively fused with the state and military apparatus to further the oppression and exploitation of the people of Asia. And in terms of the number of people under its rule alone, Japan is the largest fascist regime in human history. Well, okay. It is the task of the world's leaders, of, world's workers, to smash this horrid empire and give the nations of the co-prosperity sphere of true self-determination. The WSPR's stance, perhaps to be expected from a communist state, is extremely anti-Japanese. If Kaganovich is allowed to revive the Soviet Union, our control over the states of East Asia will become significantly harder to maintain. The Red Star rises to challenge the sun. Okay, I don't really care. I'll be honest, I don't really care. Two men, like, of all places, um... Okay, come over here. See what you can try against us. See what you can do. We triple dog dare them. And we're still building from a military factory. Oh, we can actually build stuff here too. Nice. Uh, that's the case. One, two, three, four, five. We'll, do, we'll go with five first. As we're still building up more infrastructure. Which is awesome. Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Still ten. I'm going to keep it on ten for now. Over three billion. Invest it into the GDP. So it doesn't go nearly down as much. <clears throat> Very good. Cool. We got some more of this stuff. Industry. Looking pretty good. Let's grab some military construction three. Thank you very much. And after this, a reminder of our stuff. That's not bad. Actually, before we do this, let's take a look at this. 0.9%. 45.5. Oof. Oof. That's all I can say is oof. The death of duty. Prison Sukarno has been making steady progress against the rebels, and the conflict looks to be over in a matter of weeks. As the dust settles in Indonesia and the last holdouts are found, many in high command hope for a quick series of attacks to end the sluggish conflict. General Suka Suharto now requests a meeting with the IJA command to plan the final campaigns of the war. Hopefully we'll do pretty darn well, but, you know, you never know. And at least it's only... Oh, wow, they're all playing it's winning war. It's only less than a month, so that's not too bad. I did not realize this, took, this one took so long. Big sadness. And when do we get our diplomatic actions done with Italy? Because I want to do more stuff with them, please. A reminder of our cause. Zawanishi Z1 or ZK ZIK planes rumbled across the baby blue sky with great engines buzzing above the light clouds and thundered a great grumble into the grounds below. The shivering hum that rippled across the sky was audible across the Sumatran Isles. Great mounds of paper fell from the gaseous trails of the bombers. They floated and danced through the air as they plummeted below and penetrated the thick jungle climate. <clears throat> A young man was wading through the thick forested overpasses of the islands, avoiding routes plagued with conflict and violence. He came to a clearing where his town was located and took a deep breath of the cooler air. His lungs were filled with a fresh rejuvenation as his chest expanded beyond the prickling constrictive heat that hung b below the canopy of the jungles. As he marched over, he noticed his neighbors had scrounged up dozens of the leaflets scattered across the village. Wiping sweat from his tired brow, he waded, waddled over and reached for one that rested neatly into the dry mud of the road. Brand new with a seal of the Indonesian government, the leaflets had a list of phrases printed across them in bold letters. The Red Sukarno is the father of the nation and fight just as you fought before for the nation, as well as having a sizable portrait of the president in the bottom right corner. He wiped his nose and continued to read the document as the planes blasted across the sky, fascinated and convinced by words of patriotism and service. The young man shared the leaflets with his family neighbors, of which many of them raised their eyebrows and nodded in light and approval, winning hearts and minds one word at a time. Here's some political power in Indonesia just for you. Seriously. Do we not get an event for us visiting Italy? Like, I mean, yeah, I know the localization isn't completely done yet, but still. It'd be really cool. Death of the Prince. Nice. Very nice. Wow, that's a thick Reich, not gonna lie. Oh, the poor Poles and Slovaks and all of them down there. Restore the army's grandeur. It's disappointing that England had a military coup because now they can't do anything here, which really sucks. That really, really sucks for them. Cool. And death duty in 16 days will be done with that focus. And we got about a little bit more than a month for area defense, which is fine. Woof!
I said over three billion. We shall invest it again. Hey, it's slowly going up, even though the annual GDP growth is hurting us, and this technically should be going up as well. We're still not doing too bad. <clears throat> even though I think the next one I might consider just lowering us once more, just for funsies. Maybe you never know. Cheetah, how are these guys still trying to kill each other off? Like this is one of the bloodiest conflicts I've seen in like Eastern Russia. The eleven thousand manpower. You guys have no manpower. They have how many divisions? Fifteen versus seven. Cheetah's probably gonna lose, but. You never know. So, what about after this one? He makes an offer. Let's go back over here and actually do returning seized assets. That'd be good. Cool. And get an event, hopefully. So, so Harto makes an offer. The Japanese officer commanded Jakarta fraternized or fraternized in the bustling drinking room of the Japanese consulate. Constant chatter, clinks of glasses, and groups of cackles filled the room. Some of the men sat in old brown leather chairs, others stood around high tables smoking cigarettes. The room was dim, but comfortable for those relaxing in it. A few of the officers talked to the young and beautiful women in the Jakarta that they had lured into the consulate, intermingling between groups amidst the small crowds. So Harto sat in one of the chairs, taking a sip from his glass, and slowly glanced around the room at the Japanese faces that filled this port of the Indonesian city, mustering a great strength to approach one of the commanding generals. He lifted himself from the chair and strolled over to begin a new conversation. Conversation. Awkwardly edging into the group of conversation, he forced out a laugh just as the surrounding officers chuckled at the joke made by Ayabe Kitsuju. The men turned to Sukarno and nodded their heads to acknowledge his presence. Grinning, Sukarto nodded back and turned to the officer the, to begin his questioning. Repeated banal platitudes and pain, painstakingly gnarly an, an, anecdotes. It began on the topic of Japanese involvement in the Indonesian conflict, requested that the final stages of the war were left to the central government to conclude with. Suharo pressed Ayabe whilst offering him another glass of water. Ayabe listened diligently and shaped his eyebrows with a confused intrigue. Suharo, not sure how to respond, continued with his proposal of Japanese withdrawal. The two talked for a while longer, the bustle and chatter of the room still bounced from the walls. They clinked their glasses, and Suharto, green enough for his eyes to squint with such joy, Ayabe, finished with his water, kept a straight face while gazing at the Indonesian leader. The small bubble between the two in the room was suddenly tense, but Suharto had gotten what he wanted. Either way, we benefit. Oh boy. Oh boy. A scene in Jakarta. The air in Jakarta was thick with a feeling of dread. When one's not talking, all that can be heard is the barking of dogs, the crying of babies. The local citizenry has never been friendly to the Japanese garrison, but lately, whenever a soldier's bumped into a townsperson, they're all they've done is yell and scurry off to another corner of the city. The hostility is palpable. The men of the garrison can feel it to the bone. No one is here to be trusted. The only people that a man can confide in are the other men of his unit. And so, anxious for the future, the men of the garrison buy their time. They wait for the news of something, anything. To settle their nerves, the men gamble in on their tents, and the officers drink sake. But for every friendly laugh, there is tension. Something is coming, they don't know what. Until that radio operator gets some interesting news. So Harto and his men are now making moves. They hadn't been authorized by Sukarno or the Japanese government. What was happening? In an instant, Jakarta is a lie. The rumblings of a truck, the shouting of citizens made captains. It's almost like a military parade. The police, the men of the garrison stare in shock, hoping that's just an exercise or the pacification of a rebel cell. It must be, right? It's quiet, almost too quiet. Oh boy, what's happening? Oh boy, what's going on? What's going on? Doesn't sound good. Well, we might as well, right? Cool. Hopefully nothing bad is going to happen. Hopefully nothing bad at all. Indonesia. Sukarno. The man in Medan. Thus always the traitors. Cool. The Baudun lying. Defiant. Huh. Okay, cool. Good luck, guys. Still probably has to play as Indonesia someday. Probably. 692 billion. Jesus. So bad. So when can we help our growth out? I mean, we're probably still in the Depression. And it's probably only been a year since we've actually done this stuff, but still. How is... <clears throat> well, it's going. And actually, we get this focus done? Great! Finally! Finally, 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 finally. Who, on our own... We actually get political power. That's not bad, but still. A coalition of equals. The sun rises once more. We'll do all that stuff. We'll probably do other stuff. The liberal powers increase significantly. A question of labor? Oh, let's privatize the railways. With a peace return to the Pacific, it provided us with an opportunity to consolidate our holdings throughout the, not only Korea and Taiwan, but also the rest of the sphere to that end. Old administrations engage in widespread state-owned railway construction largely to feed the needs of the military. As it is with most of our current economic woes, these assets have largely failed to be profitable. While privatizing the entire railway network could be unwise considering the military importance of many of the alliance, we could start to make inroads into privatization with Japan itself. Minister Nakasone has a plan, namely to use the Tokyo inner city underground me metropolitan system as a guinea pig for large-scale private privatization in the future. Infrastructure construction speed goes up. Oh, we actually get more infrastructure anyways. Oh, that's kind of cool. Still looking really good here. Any other areas that would like some more civilian factories? Yes, they would. Yes, 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 yes. Research area defense. Just let time go on. Doesn't really matter too much. Let's grab some naval helicopter aviation. Very good. 
Do we have anything for budget? Yes, over 3 billion. I just say I want to cut this down at least once more, so. Hey, less than 690? Not bad. Not bad at all. And then we'll continue investing in the GDP, so that's good. Yeah, I think we're doing really well here. Can we help build infrastructure in our allies? No, we cannot. That sucks. That really sucks. <clears throat> Not bad. In about a month, we'll have resource extraction three. <clears throat> Alrighty, and then keep hold of key industries. You know, I'll let you guys decide. Should we keep hold of key industries? Or should we do a re assert resource dominance? I'll let you guys decide, as well as decide, <clears throat> ensure access across the sphere, or keep our fingers on the scale. Let me know in the comments below. And actually, that does increase our public approval. But we're going to continue with closer look at mobilization laws. Our nation stands still in the shadow of the National Mobilization Law passed in 38 under the administration of Fuminaro Kono. While necessary, now, while necessary 20 years ago, <clears throat> it has long since stopped being relevant. In particular, the law focuses on several key sectors of the Japanese society, labor unions, nationalization of strategic industries, press controls, rationing, curfews, and media censorship, and the continued continuation of all of which is a stranglehold on Japanese society. One could, once again, push for a gradual easing of the national mobilization law, attacking it from the angle of unconstitutionality, the way the House did nearly 30 years ago, or we could attack it from the angle of economics and financial prudence. Loosening regulations and privatizing assets would do the Treasury good in the long term. Either way, we must dismantle the act and then rebuild Japanese society. <clears throat> Hold there, my friends. We're going to end today's episode there because we've gone on for about an hour. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we shall continue making Japan economically stronger and just better all around. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.